Hello and welcome to Bold Conscious Connections, the show where we delve into the journeys of exceptional individuals who have embraced their true potential. My name is Raju Panjwani, your guide on this adventure of discovery. In each episode, we connect with inspiring leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries who share their stories of transformation, resilience, and success. This is a space for you to find inspiration, my friends, learn from others' experiences, and ignite your own path of personal and professional growth. Now, so whether you're seeking a spark of motivation or strategies for success, join us on this journey of bold and conscious connections. In this refreshed season four, Bold Entrepreneurial Tales, we're celebrating the stories of individuals who bravely stepped beyond traditional roles to follow their entrepreneurial hearts, as I say. These are not just business stories. They're personal journeys of courage, creativity, and transformation. Whether you're dreaming of starting your own venture or seeking inspiration to keep going, these tales are for you. Join us as we share relatable life experiences, real life experiences, challenges and triumphs that resonate with your journey towards success and fulfillment. Now, without further ado, let me get to today's episode. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another episode of Bold Conscious Connections podcast. Today, I'm really excited to introduce Dr. Sapna Sharma. Dr. Sharma is a former ophthalmologist who transitioned into counseling, life coaching, and motivational speaking. With 20 years of experience, she's now the director at Mind Junction, a multi-specialty counseling and psychology center in Nagpur, India. Dr. Sharma is an internationally certified life reinvention coach, a certified psychometric tools assessor, and the author of two really impactful books, Spiritual Parenting, Lessons from Our Children, and For the Love of Me. She's also a TEDx speaker and has been recognized for several, with several awards for her excellence in counseling and motivation. So this is a true story of someone turning an entrepreneur after having had an incredible medical career. Why do people do that? Well, we dived into all of that in this conversation. She shared her journey from uh, medicine to counseling, the challenges of overcoming uh, tradition in India, her insights into balancing her professional role with personal life, well-being, taking care of two children. She also offers a lot of practical advice for those considering a career change and also emphasize the importance of self-awareness and perseverance. So let me not in this, stand in the way of, of this episode and you enjoy. I'm so excited today to welcome Dr. Sapna Sharma. She's an ophthalmologist, a physician a turned counselor, life coach, motivational speaker. She's a TEDx speaker as well. She's an author of two books, Spiritual Parenting, Lessons from Our Children. She has two children. And another book was called For the Love of Me. So, and she's a counselor, guides people in pain and confusion, relationship issues, stress, illnesses, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure we'll get it, get into it. But so anyway, first of all, welcome to the show, Dr. Sharma. Thank you, Raju. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And so you're based in Nagpur in India. Funny, I, I was in Nagpur for three years during my school years. So you know, it's a place I'm it's familiar with. It's a small world. It is a small world indeed. Yeah, we won't go into how we met, but here we are. So are you good with some questions around your journey and also some rapid fire at the end? How about that? Perfect. Shoot. Okay. So first of all, I always ask this question, you know, all the credentials you have, awards you received, et cetera, will all be in the show notes. But first of all, I'd like to know who Sapna is, not what she does. Girl next door. That, that's what I would describe myself. I'm just a girl next door who likes to dream a lot and live a lot. So tell us more. How do you do that? I guess I just believe that, you know, I'm not just one person. We hmm. usually have these labels, you know, he's a doctor, she's an engineer. So I feel we are much more than that. You know, and Every person has a lot more inside them. And that's what I've been doing, always exploring and you know, giving it a try. Whatever I believe that I am, I keep giving it a try. So explorer, you may crock call. Some things mm-hmm. works, works, some may not work. I keep giving it a try. So the most important, the obvious one for me is, you know, when, again, this goes back to what we do versus who we really are at the core as you're starting to talk about this. I mean, we cannot escape the fact that you were a doctor, an ophthalmologist. Yeah. You went through 
you know, grueling training in India, which is, I know it's hard. And you became a doctor and then you practiced as an ophthalmologist and then you decided that, you know, to change course. So what were those pivotal moments that led to that change? I won't say exactly there were moments because I believe that the age at which we are supposed to choose our careers, especially in India, you know, it's like 15 or 16 years of age. When we have, uh, one, we have no idea about any career or the world. And two, we have no idea about ourselves, who I am and what I would want to. No idea at all. Mm. And I find it pretty absurd that you have to make a lifelong decision based on that age. So what came obviously at that age was the medical career. Because as an mm. education, you know, in India especially, parents also prefer either your child enters an engineering field or a medical field. That's the trend. So mm. if you have scored good enough, you are doomed to be in one of those fields. And yeah, so that's you how it doomed. happened. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because see, you know, most of the times when parents force you then and they can see that, okay, they have this thing that, okay, my child is brilliant because he scored good in the high school. So it has to be one of these parts, you know, things are changing now. But there was a time when it was believed that intelligent people do not go for the arts or humanities or commerce. It's absurd. But then it was that. Time. Anyway, so I entered medical college always knowing that this is not what I want to do but mm. not knowing what I really wanted to do. So I went through the training and uh, I would say that I'm a pretty sincere person. So whatever I start, I try to you know, take it to some logical conclusion. So I went through the medical college training, got my first degree MBBS, but all the time feeling, you know, I want to do something else. That's when after my graduation, I was enrolled for my next degree that post-graduation surgery. And I saw this ad in uh, newspapers uh, with it you know, Aeros just wanted. I did that, yeah. I took a break of a year and I was flying for Air India International, flew over half of the world. I realized that is not what I wanted to do. Came back, completed my PG. And when you are studying in a medical college, if not anything else, one thing is sure to happen, that is you get married to a doctor. And then and when two doctors are married, definitely you guys end up having your own hospital. So that's what I went to the practice, another 10 years trying to explore, trying to find out what I wanted to do and that uneasiness went on increasing I was always talking to everyone this is not what I want to do and then people would ask me okay what is it that you want to do and I did not have an answer then I met someone who had started doing this you know training programs it was pretty new at that time yeah. for college students they used to typically call this the personality building program and all so he said that okay you speak well why don't you come and join me and see if you like it so I started going with him to the colleges all professional colleges, engineering colleges, architecture college, and interacting with the students. And I realized an amazing thing. 70% student in any college did not know why they are there. That's when it stuck me, you know, career guidance is something which is absolutely essential. And that's when the change started. I realized that I have to set up this whole thing called as career guidance because we didn't have it in India at that time. And definitely not in central India. And I started as a career counselor and everything else followed. That's the wow. So, you know, certainly my audience is, is people who are, who are in careers who are successful, but they feel unfulfilled, right? To, to the point yeah. you make, whatever, whatever the career is. So it's either, you know, given to us by, guided by the parents in well-meaning ways, but, you know, because that's yeah. all they know. And then it turns out that, you know, we grow up to be in, their, in our 30s and then suddenly your full personality is formed and you don't know, but this is for you because, or you realize, you know, I'm good at what I'm doing, but it's just not what I'm content with so it's very appropriate in, in the journey because but, but not everybody's journey is the same right everybody has their own and then you know other things happen in life you get married and have yeah. kids how did Precisely. that how is that as a challenge that is a big challenge you know especially in india since we do not have any social security system of any kind at all you know we are 100 percent. it's like you on you save you take care of yourself so in that case even if someone realizes at certain stage this is not what i want to do they do not have, usually have the luxury to change over and so it was a tightrope walk because I could not just you know up and close the hospital which I was running with my husband so for two years it was a, it was a huge thing because by that time I had two kids and taking care of the hospital and taking care of the household and also then working towards a new career so yeah for those two years then you know acquiring new qualifications and learning and all of that I guess for a long period of about 10 years I must not have slept more than three hours every night. So yeah, you have to give something for something. That's why I said, you know, it's a, it's not everyone is doing it. 
Right. So are you also saying that entrepreneurship is difficult or is that not everybody's cup of tea? Even though 70%, and this is still the case by the way, 67% of the employees in the world in general for all the studies show that they're unsatisfied with what they do. Yeah, because one, you don't get a paycheck at the end of the month. Two, while you're not earning, you're still investing money and your time and money doesn't start coming in so early at an early stage. So that's the biggest fear that people have, you know, that's why they don't want to let go of uh, something which is there in their hand. And that's why people don't want, they're always waiting for, you know, one fine day, I'll have this much of saving one fine day, my kids have finished education and one fine day, then I will do it. And, and it's a real thing, you know, I mean, you cannot replace money with anything. So that is one mm -hmm. of the major things. Secondly, at least in my part of the world, no one encourages change. Okay, because everyone likes when status you your part of the world, it's everywhere. Yeah, good. That good to know that. Because see, it's everyone likes the status quo. You know, if I'm not growing, you are not growing either. If I'm miserable, you are also miserable. Makes two miserable like wonderful to live. So right. when you are trying to do something different, you're not going to be encouraged. You are going to be actually pulled down by most of the people. So whatever little courage you do gather, it's usually sucked out of you. That mm. makes it very difficult. Most of the time, and especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, people are going to tell you how it is not going to work and how it is not for us. You know, it's mm. not for people like us and it's not going to work. So these three things put together, you know, always it makes it difficult for people to take that decision, to take that plunge. Well, so I focus only on this plunge because that's my entire life, okay? Because it's needling the punch, making right. sure the punch and making sure there is a leap because ultimately you have to jump, right? You know you want to jump, but you still hesitate. So go back to the money aspect because that seems to be the driver for most people. So do you think yeah. that that fear is justified, Sapna? See, now again, depends. In India, like I mentioned, we do not have... Uh, social security system of any kind at all. So you mm -hmm. have to take care of yourself and if you have a dependent family. No one is going to feed you. There's no free lunches anywhere at all. So mm -hmm. if you are a person who has a family and you don't have another source of income, I think that is to be considered. That can be worked out. There would be ways around it. You know, they can be planning for it because people do come to me for with their dreams about startups. And I said, sure. no, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that, you know, do you have your plans right? Yeah. That's the difference. So that's the crux of my coaching, right? The plans, right? I'm not suggesting to anybody that they should quit today and start a job. Right. No, I'm mean, start a career in, in entrepreneurship. No, I'm saying you already know that there's something inside of you that's burning to go express yourself in the form of a business. However, to the point that you're making, which is very valid, is that, you know, the fear drives a lot of things. But on the other hand, you have to be practical. If you have a family, etc., yeah. what do you do? So it's thoughtful, but are you saying that the joy of the other side, the entrepreneurship versus the fear, how do you deal with this so that this joy outweighs or the discontentment that you have in this job? How does this make it so strong that you will overcome anything, any hurdle? So I'm going to say this, something which absolutely goes with what you are doing is that, you know, you need to talk to people who believe. It's mm -hmm. very important if you want to, you know, overcome this fear and see what really is that you do not talk to pessimistic people. You do not talk to people who are not experienced in this field. You do not talk to people who have given up somewhere in between. It's absolutely essential to be careful in this particular matter. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you need to seek out people, one, number one, who has done a change, someone who can be a coach or a guide who understand what this journey is. Because then you know that, okay, I can balance both. But if you're talking to the wrong people, your fear is going to be like way up here somewhere right. and you will not take the step. So the wrong people are people who don't want to move and they're fine where they are, right? That's clearly not my people. I'm only speaking with people that are ready to make the jump, but just don't know how and where. That's all. Let's go back to balancing demanding roles while maintaining your own well-being. Since I'm so this podcast is called Bold Conscious Connections, but part of it is boldness. You spoke about the courage you need to have in, in one of the two, three things you said. So we can talk about courage. You already have the courage. You've done this, demonstrated it. In terms of the other side of it, the demanding, conflicting roles we all have and maintaining the well-being, what are your consciousness practices that you follow, Sapna, in your life? See, one is I would definitely say that belief in whatever you're planning to do or whatever you wish to do. You know, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing to begin with, because if you do not believe 
then everything, nothing else is going to work at that particular point of time. Mm -hmm. The belief is what is going to give you uh, the strength to go through whatever changes you need to make. Because like I said, you need to go out of your way, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, you need to go out of your way and it requires a lot of strength to not yeah. back out because some days are going to be good. Some days are not. Like I mm -hmm. said that, you know, for about 10 years, I did not sleep for more than three hours every night. That was my sacrifice mm -hmm. on my part because I had kids to take care of and I had a family to take care of. Yeah. Are you willing to go through it? When I talk yeah. to most of the people and I share with them that, you know, what are you willing to give up for mm -hmm. whatever you are planning to? And if you are yeah. not ready to get out of your comfort zone, it's not going to work. So that belief is the most important one. I do not think that I had more awareness of consciousness at that time. It came later though. And with the change, I think I have adopted regular meditations, which has mm. been going on for years. And eventually, you know, when you actually understand the crux of meditation, sometimes you don't even need to sit down in a, exactly. in a particular pose. You know, you are meditating right. even working, you're meditating while you're sleeping, when you're driving, you're still meditating. Mm. But that brings in a lot of awareness. And that mm. awareness creates the platform on which you can deal with the uncertainties of entrepreneurship. So well said. This is the life. This is the life that we are living here. Exactly. Awesome. So I'm going to go a little bit now into the actual work that you do. So can you share, I mean, you've got personal experiences, challenges that you've talked about that sort of informs your counseling practice, right? I assume. Can you share a story where your personal growth significantly impacted how you approached a client's need, for example? One thing I can definitely say is, you know, the can't happen word went out of my life. This is not possible is a word, is a phrase which disappeared from my life because of this journey which I took. So when I am dealing with clients, you know, I'm whatever they say, it's always like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely we can do that. And when people have commented that, how can you, see, how come you say that yes to everything, it can be done? Because I know and I believe that, you know, and then people say that, what if I fail? And so in my journey, I've learned one thing that failure is not an absolute term. It's a very relative term, right? So for a person who starts something and does not take it to a logical conclusion, then they experience failure. But someone who continues, then something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Something is definitely going to happen. It's not, it's not going to not happen, you know? Delve into that a little bit more because you're a counselor and you're a coach, as am I, but I just want you to go a little deeper on that one. Something is going to happen. In other words, what are you saying that an action creates something right a result some effect is going to be there there has to be some outcome if you yeah. continue and you know persistently most people do not have the patience so it's an immature abortion of yes. the of what they have started mm -hmm. and that is what they call failure and i don't think mm -hmm. that's a failure you haven't even taken it to that limit you know but a simple thing that i can tell you is one simple principle that they say that you know, if you, you should not expect a result till three years minimum when you start a business. I mean, that's the basic uh, of the rule. Yeah. Earlier days, yeah. to five years now, three years. Now three years. Yeah. Hmm. And most people are not aware of that. That's a very interesting thing. And people who do not plan, I have seen another thing that many people believe that, you know, this is the capital that I have. Yeah. And they are ready. They invest all of their capital at once. They do not have the three-year sustenance plan, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, you have to keep on pouring money into the business for three years and you need your own sustenance money for three years. Where is that? Sure. And so because of that, within six months, when they do not get a return, that's when they close down. That's, that's when they stop. Yeah. And that's when they believe that, you know, it doesn't work. I'm a failure. And, that's and, val and that validates their belief. And then says, see, it didn't work. And therefore, it's not going to yeah. work for me. It's not my cup of tea. It doesn't, work. it doesn't work. That's what they start believing. And more unfortunate is that's what they keep telling other people that, you know, it doesn't work. Don't try. It's a waste. So that when I was working, I realized that, see, when I started with career counseling, that's the first thing. Like I said, there was no uh, in Central India. In fact, in all of India, people didn't know of the word counselor. We only had that shrink or mad doctor kind of a understanding, you know, either it's a psychiatrist yeah. or psychologist. Yes. But someone who can guide you along the path of the road uh, of your life was something was that idea did not exist. For first five years, I only had to spend creating awareness in the society. Money was, of course, not coming for the first five years. And people would, you know, give me weird looks and they would say, why would anyone come and ask you what to do with their life? Everyone knows. Mm. Everyone yes. knows. 
So that five years which I was putting in, you know, it's like planting a bamboo seed. Yeah. It's just going backwards, and you have no idea. It looks like nothing is coming out, and it's a waste. And then it shoots up. Yeah. But that patience of five years or whatever is the time required is something. If you are not ready to wait, it's that's not going to work. So these are the things which people are not aware of. So you obviously bring that into your sessions. Is how you're describing this. To, is is that fair? That's part of your personal uh, experience. Your journey also feeds I into the fact that trust me. And those books which I have written, I have laid bare my own personal life out there. My book on mm-hmm. spiritual parenting. I have written my own mistakes in bringing up my child, and mm-hmm. and the things that I was going through the life. and how i would get frustrated and how i would maybe sometimes you know even hit the kids and i would break down and everything i have written and then after that i have met so many people women especially who have said who said that you know it seems like you have you're talking for us and so they That's were right. more forthcoming they were more forthcoming in meeting a counselor and discussing and saying that okay i am going through it otherwise you know especially in parenting and in relationships we still have that taboo kind of thing you know i don't want to let anyone know that it's i'm a failure so when i talk about it when i share it it's just easier for people awesome so we'll put the links to the books i assume they're widely available right um, yeah on amazon or something like that yeah. right okay. all right so you've touched on this the philosophical or maybe spiritual beliefs you have that shape your approach to the work that you do how do you integrate these beliefs when addressing complex personal and professional issues with your clients i don't think you have to do that work you know when the belief is actually there this is what mm. you live it happens mm. It, you know it just happens so whenever i'm dealing with anything in any particular issues that people are facing you know i may suggest them something and they may agree with it by the end of it mm-hmm. but i often tell them this is knowledge this knowledge you have to believe in this knowledge so much that it turns into wisdom and then right. when that wisdom turns into realization that's when it becomes a part of you beautifully said yeah so the belief we enough. talk the same language it looks like we talk the same language jesus <laughs> so it's almost eerie maybe we're reading the same Books and we have the same mentors. It seems that way. So, what do you look forward to leaving leaving in this world? We're all going to pass on. So, is there a legacy that you intend to leave? Also, that ties into the question of you know, in these uncertain times that people have been navigating, the times are already always uncertain in my view. But you know, there's always something going on in the world that makes it more uncertain. Or like COVID, everybody talks about COVID all the time. Or Now something else is going to happen, or the economy is going bad, or meltdown happens. Whatever happens, things all always happen. But if these are more difficult times, or on the other hand, the technology is so in your hand that every you know, as you say, information is not knowledge. Information is available readily. Then, if you get some skill sets or knowledge, then you apply it. That's when you get the wisdom. Generally, people are not aware of it, but they get scared. So. in the face of all these uncertainties what would advice would you give to somebody who's either wanting to be an entrepreneur or wants to be you know be a counselor or a consultant or something you know in let's say the field that you're in i would say find a mentor mm. i would so strongly say find a mentor because when we have so much of availability why reinvent the wheel and you know spend so much of time and so many heartbreaks over the same thing people right. have done it already people have done everything you know and then we like you said technology we are connected to people across the world so we can actually find our mentors any any anywhere they may want yeah. and yes if you have a hand to hold it does help it does help so i personally believe that you know it doesn't make any sense to reinvent the wheel again and again just to prove a point and investing in a mentor or a training program or a coaching program you know it's an investment towards your entrepreneurship journey right. and that should be looked at it that way And so it accelerates your growth. It shortens the learning curve. It just makes things. You know, you're paying for speed. In other words, right? That's, that's yes. Yes. Yeah. Before we get to the rapid fire, and there's lots of these questions, and and I could go on forever, as you know, in these questions. You know, are there specific attitudes or skills that you believe in today's world are crucial for people out there? It doesn't have to be uh, youngsters, but you know, g- given the evolving landscape of mental health, everybody talks about that. Counseling. What advice would you give them? I do. I you know. one one single thing which i feel underlines everything that's happening in the world today and i believe that the world needs to be, get more aware of it as self esteem mm. i feel so sad that this word should be introduced in the vocabulary of children right from kindergarten yeah and because and self esteem is rooted in self awareness which is again absolutely largely missing we have developed our self esteem and our self worth from 
what the world believes is the right and good mm-hmm. and that's a very sad thing because no one fits into that you know when you see that model who who's like you know followed by 10 may mirrors she's a made up person mm. and but i get my feedback from there they know i'm not like her and that puts me down and then everything whenever there is a story of a successful entrepreneur that is coming up no one is focusing on the 10 other failures that the guy had had before that you know sure. everyone talks about that picture and that's very unfortunate that we get our self worth from that if he is that and i'm not good enough and you know i can't do this he can't do that so i feel every person should work with a counselor or a therapist or a coach on first building up their self awareness and self esteem Well so this is a very important point because it's a foundational issue right so I personally for instance grew up in India and grew up with very 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 low self esteem and it took me decades decades to go overcome that because I didn't even know what that meant but anything I look for validation outside of me like if somebody believes that I look good and I'm doing something right I needed somebody's validation you know you cook something you constantly looking for validation so this has been so ingrained in us and i'm not blaming india or i'm not blaming the culture i'm just simply saying that i think that's what you're saying that that self esteem is something that it has to come from parents right because when you're born into a world that already exists with all the systems and the processes that you are supposed to follow the parents are doing the best that's all they know so there's nobody to blame but the point is that how do you inculcate that as you were saying everybody should but how do you make that awareness right so right now let's not go back to what the parents should have done okay let's Correct. forget about that so now whatever your age is you're an adult responsible for your own life so you're in your 30s or 40s yeah so you can still start working on it you know and the basis of self awareness self esteem is self awareness so it's not that self esteem is mean you know i suddenly start saying that you know i'm the best in the world no self awareness is i know this is good about me i know this is not so good about me i know this is what i really want to change and this is what i really accept and i don't care for what people say i put it in a very simplistic form but mm-hmm. i feel very strongly that you know if you realize it at any point of time you should start seek out a counselor or therapist or a coach who can help you work on self esteem and trust me once you have done the work it takes time once you have done the work it's a liberation it's an That's amazing cool. liberation because it stops bothering you what people think about you it stops mm-hmm. bothering you whether you have done the right thing or not or whether what impression other people are going to carry about you and it's a liberation amazing yep. and then you can take any step forward you are less afraid of failures after that yes how to feel free in a world that's always full of restrictions yes that's my book <laughs> oh okay <laughs> well that's what my book is it says anyway so are you ready for some rapid questions Let's try. All right. The most surprising feedback you've ever received. I don't think there has been anything surprising. You're that yeah. self-aware, okay? Yeah. No, nothing okay. surprising. Okay. One word your clients use to describe you. Comfortable? Comfortable? Good. The biggest misconception about life coaching. I don't need it. Hmm. I don't so need good. it. I know what Yeah. No. You got this figured out. Okay, yeah. I don't need it. If you could instantly master any skill, what would it be? Singing. Ooh. <laughs> well, you're a good singer. I'm you know, I'm, I'm told. I, no, I managed to sing a few lines, but yeah, I would really like to be, you know, be music. <laughs> okay. In the current trend in the study of psychology and other mental things that are going on in the world, what do you find promising? I feel I find that the younger generation is open to counseling. they are open to the understanding the fact that okay we cannot figure out everything ourselves and you know we can take help we can ask for help that's what i'm seeing in the younger generation and it really gives me very good feeling because it wasn't so in my generation growing up sure yeah okay what's the last professional risk you took going into partnership, partnership. i've always been going alone i didn't went to go into practice mm-hmm. partnership mm-hmm. and it didn't work because i would say that maybe i i'm not a business person i'm a passionate counselor at heart mm. so maybe if i want to run a business i'll need you raju i need a coach to understand how to do that <laughs> well i don't like to think of myself as a business coach but people come to me for for that too yes absolutely all right favorite quote or mantra you live by one day at a time 
Yay. Okay, awesome. <laughs> One thing you do to reset after a tough day. I work a lot on gratitude. Mm. And it instantly brings me back to the reality. Mm. It helps me connect with the facts that, you know, my life is amazing. You know, once I know it again, because my all the time, all the minds are trying to tell people, you know, that you are such a pathetic person. Your life mm. is so pitiful. That's what the mind keeps on telling us again and again. And at such time, if I can remember my gratitude and that suddenly reminds me when I start seeing gratitude for every small thing, even mm. the fresh water in, in my shower, which half the world does not have. And I am suddenly, yeah. feel my life is amazing. Reset. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we all count what we don't have rather than saying, Look how far you've come. Look at the journey you've had rather than what I haven't done, what I haven't done, I don't have. That sort of thing. That's amazing. Yes, gratitude is a, is the the gateway to living a life. The best part of writing a book? To me, it gives me a lot of different ways to express myself. When I'm speaking, it is a limited time to it. When I'm making videos or anything, it's a limited time to it. But when I'm writing, it's a book. It can be as big as I want. And it can be as small as I want. And I can be here one minute and I can be there one minute. It just it gives me, it just lets me be. Great. Okay. If you weren't doing this counseling work, what would you be doing? I wish singing. Mm. Uh, what I'm like singing, singing is your passion? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if I do get another birth, I would like to be born as a, like a proper singer, you know, who a knows proper. music. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is not meant to end on a serious note. What's the one change you hope to see in the mental health field? More awareness. More mm. awareness among people to ask for help. More awareness among people to understand that when someone is talking about mental health, it is as serious as a physical health issue. Mm. And even more than that, I would like the world to understand that, you know, very small part of mental health issues needs medicines. Most of it does not. And if only I am ready, willing to take the responsibility of my own happiness and my own life, I won't mm. need medicines. It's quite possible. Mm. Unfortunately, when we, most of the people are trying to take shortcuts, I am mm. depressed. I need antidepressant. I'm, I have anxiety. I need anxiety. Why do you have anxiety? There's a the percentage wise, it's a small number when it's a chemically induced depression. Yes. But mm -hmm. most of the other time it is coming out of some existential issues that you're facing. Yes. And we, I really wish we can reduce the use of psych uh, psychiatric medication. So well said. Listen, I could go on. I have tons, mm -hmm. tons of other questions I have prepared for, but we'll leave that for another time. I really appreciate you being here and speaking of gratitude. You know, thank you so much for, for taking the time <laughs> out of your busy day. And I want to just end in gratitude as well. And in that same vein, I always like to ask my guest, was there anything that you discovered in this call we've had for the past, let's say, 30 minutes or 40 minutes? Is there something you uh, discovered? I just discovered another person who maybe thinks like me and mm -hmm. who wants to promote the things which I want to promote in this world. A lot of love for self. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Well, maybe somebody will, who's listening still will say, bring her back, bring her back. Yeah, so maybe we'll Always, we'll do that. anytime. Be a pleasure. All right. Take care. All the best. And we'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Yeah. Take care. And that, my friend, brings us to the end of another episode of Bold Conscious Connections. I hope today's conversation has sparked new ideas and inspired you to embrace your own journey of growth and entrepreneurship. Remember, every step forward is a step towards achieving your dreams and your success. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and download the episode that you heard today. This way you can stay connected with our community of bold and conscious leaders. Take at least one action today, my friend, towards your goals and join us next time for more empowering stories and insights. Here is to your power.